right. Welcome back after that fascinating debate. To want to switch gears completely, it's time for Mock the Week. And tonight, it's all about dreams. Dreams that are valid and dreams that, well, should never get beyond being dreams. Uh, the funny thing about dreams is that you can dream with your eyes wide open and never know that you are indeed dreaming. Wilson Burrow explains why dreams can get most dreamers in trouble. A very good evening to you and welcome to yet another episode of Mock the Week. My name is Wilson Buru and let's talk about dreams. As you know, all of them are valid according to one Ruth Peter Adhyongo. No matter where you're from, your dreams are valid. That's right, all dreams are valid, including those of the not-so-dry variety. And it is this very strong statement that has led our obscenely paid politicians to dream a lot. Where do we start? Let's see. Um, computer, give me the name of one really dreamy fellow. Maybe later on we talk to our brothers in the interior ministry and see how, can, how we can work together. No matter where you're from, your dreams are valid. Great. Everything seems to be working out perfectly for Mr. Kimemia here. President Uhuru and his administration have really no choice. I mean, how can you say no to those really, really, really dreamy eyes? I mean, seriously, is there anybody out there, anybody else who has dreamier eyes? Oh, okay. Oh, oh, wow, wow. Oh, oh, wow, okay. To be honest, it was actually a contest between him and this guy. And you can see why we have a clear winner. Let's, let's take down that, please. I don't want to start getting nightmares. I honestly, I'm trying to remember what we were talking about. The rearrangement has seen the ouster of Francis Kimemia from government. No, 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 no. You, you, you can't fire him. Oh, what about the dreamy eyes and the experience in security matters? Na, 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 hey, 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 goodbye. Now that we are on the topic of uh, taking people out of places they really want to be in, the government has asked the United Nations High Commission for Refugees to close the Dadaab refugee camp within the next three months. And as KTN's Noah Otieno reports, the government reaction is part of the backlash which has followed the terror attack in Garissa. Wait! Wait! Before we get to somebody who has had food for breakfast, I have a question for one Mr. John Alan Mukaitai Nitakukatakata Namu. Um... Who is Nua Otieno? As KTN's Nua Otieno reports... Say it with me now, John. Noa. Nua Otieno reports... Uh, I give up. Tumezungumza na watu wa UNHCR. Tumewambia iyo kambi ambayo iko dadab kwa miezi mitatu wahamishe iende Somalia. You know, that, that's cold. But I get the reasoning behind this. Um, Dadaab is becoming a breeding ground for terrorists, even though the last guy who led terrorists in killing students had never been to Dadaab and was actually studying law at the University of Nairobi. But uh, yeah, I get it. This is a matter of national security. All those women and children in Dadaab are terrorists. And they need to go back to their wanton country. Where, <laughs> by the way, um, is the best part. We're building a 700-kilometer wall to make sure they do not cross back because, as we know, terrorists can't climb walls unless said terrorists are actually cats. If, um, if you're business savvy, it's now time to start manufacturing a 600,000 seater bus. But surely this is lazy from the government and the opposition. Wait. There's still an opposition in this country, right? What? What is it they do again? I'm looking for my Johnny. Yep, 
we are all alone, ladies and gentlemen. And speaking of ladies, um, <clears throat> let, me, let me give some advice. It is important, extremely important, not to be fake. Wait, how, how, how did that picture get there? Take it down, take it down. Thank you. So anyway, there was almost a diplomatic catastrophe that unfolded in an airport in Kigali, Rwanda, after a woman from Kenya was discovered to have been carrying buttock size and shape enhancing technology stroke devices, which is uh, quite popular as I came to learn. But the question now becomes, um, how did the Rwandese discover that she was wearing plastic derriere? And for this, I introduce to you our newest correspondent, that is Nick Akala and Godwin Kimani. A very huge welcome to the two of you gentlemen. And let me start with you, Nick. Um, how did they detect that she had a plastic butt? Now, Wilson, look here. Rwanda was named the safest and the cleanest country to live in Africa. Mm -hmm. So they basically don't need those metal detectors. So okay. they install plastic fake butt detectors, also called plastic detectors. Now, plastics are considered an ISO in Rwanda. And plastic buds and uh, fake buds are even considered a real threat to the environment. Mm -hmm. In fact, in Rwanda, plastics are considered an, uh, a real threat more than metallic things like, say, guns, knives, and everything like that. Well, what an interesting revelation that is. Thank you very much, Nick. And let's now cross over to our other very new correspondent, uh, Godwin Kimani. Go Godwin, let's switch languages to Swahili. Who you monamke? Alijulikana vipi kwamba makalio yake hayakuwa ya kuzaliwa nayo. Bwana Wilson, utafiti wangu umedhibitisha haya. Jambo la kwanza, kuna uwezekano ya kwamba makalio yalikuwa tofauti. Maana yake, kalio moja likawa kubwa kuliko lingine. Mm -hmm. Pia katika ile hali ya kutembea, kuna uwezekano kuwa sehemu ya makalio ikawa haina uhusiano wote na mwili wake. Inafaa makalio yaonekane ya kidondoka kulingana na hatua za miguu yake. Pia ni dhahiri kwamba aliyegundua haya alikuwa ni mwanaume. Huyu ndiye angeweza kuziona tofauti kwani macho yao wanaume lazima yafuatane na kumzinikisha mwanamke anapopita. <laughs> you, you know I, seriously I, I, I agree. I agree with Godwin. Men have some very strange behaviors. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and we'll now take a very short break. We'll be right back after this. All great leaders have dreams. Martin Luther King had one. I have a dream. And Nairobi governor Ivan Skidero also recently discovered the art of dreaming. Well, that's after he recovered from an acute and severe case of selective amnesia. <laughs> I don't remember slapping anybody. Anyway, I digress. Kidera woke up one morning and discovered the art of exercising and that it is an important aspect of human well-being. And what better way to work out than to walk off your belly fat? So it turned out that Kidero loved Nairobi so much that he gave the city his only begotten exercising advice. Walk. And walk he did. And to make sure that the people in Nairobi became a healthy lot, he put up these drums on all roundabouts on Uhuru Highway. The result? Ridiculous traffic on the roads. The consequence? People started alighting from a tattoos and walking to their various destinations. It has been scientifically established that is the best one. The governor's plan was a huge success as Nairobians were very busy walking out and working out, losing all their weight, and boy, were they happy about it. So, unaona kama hiyo jam ya kidero ilifanya watu wako wanafanya tizi? Eh, sana, wamefanya tizi sana. Hiyo ni kitu poma ni kitu mbaya? Ni kitu mbaya. Kwa nini? Wanafutufinya kwa biyashara yetu. Lakini suume kama wewe ni mtu mkubwa, suta utakuwa mdogo sasa, wanze ku lose weight. Ya, ya, hapa utafanya kama wewe ni mdogo, lakini na wewe kama ni mkonde itakuwaji. Vile oleka hiyo drum, inakuwa mzuri kwa kwa kufanya exercise. Ni vizuri ama vibaya? Ni vibaya kwa sababu tukienda kasi tunacherewa. Na lakini si inafanya ujenge mwili? Apana siwezi kusema hivyo kwa sababu na kasi na yu inaningotia pale. Bosi ya nanigombanisha kira mara. Things about time. 
He, meant he let the drums do their work. Drums can be kept for water or oil. The good Dr. Kidero even brought in the health cabinet secretary, James Masharia. Uh, we are here with uh, Traffic One. Who was at hand to explain the benefits of working out on a regular basis. It's important to make sure that we tell Kenyans to make sure they have discipline. But just like a gym, even for this workout, Nairobians got to have a three-day break from all this exercising. We will remove the barriers that uh, restricted uh, turns on the roundabouts. So when all is said and done, the only message to our dear governor is, congratulations, sir. You have managed to see through something you started. Oh. Wait a minute. We will remove the barriers. Yeah, it was a dream. I let it stay a dream. Jerry Mujura reporting for Mock the Week. Well, that brings us to the end of our engagement tonight. Stay safe and God bless. See you next Sunday.